is Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for your calls and thoughts if you make the call now at 855-450-FREE. That's toll-free and brought to you by SACL CAI. With you tonight, it's Ian. Nemi. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Archives are galore, all completely free. You can listen to hours and hours and hours and years probably worth of Free Talk Live over at freetalklive.com. Like the show? Want to help support Free Talk Live? You like the fact that those archives are free? Well, they're not free for us to put online. Somebody's got to pay for that hosting and you know doing things like that. The AMP program can help support Free Talk Live to get Free Talk Live into more ears, to get on more radio stations around the country. We've got over 125 stations today, thanks to listeners like you for becoming Free Talk Live amplifiers. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. You go to amp.freetalklive.com. You can get signed up, use any major credit card through PayPal, or use Visa or MasterCard right through our website. That's AMP. Dot freetalklive.com. Uh, the phone lines are brought to you by SACL CAI. SACL CAI is a company that's uh, managed by Jason Osborne. Jason Osborne also has his own podcast that he does with Brett Fenoy. That podcast is called School Sucks Project.com. And School Sucks Project is a podcast about real education and deconstructing state indoctrination. They On there, they discuss learning alternatives and self-education, critical thinking, peaceful parenting, personal growth, better communication strategies. All kinds of things are on the the table there at School Sucks Project. And you can find it at schoolsucksproject.com. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. Chris in Santa Cruz listening to KOMY. Hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. I just wanted to mention uh, something about the Pledge of Allegiance. Um paraphrasing my favorite libertarian, my favorite uh, living libertarian, Roderick Long, that the Pledge of Allegiance isn't just indoctrination. It's specifically, it's a loyalty oath. And loyalty oaths are something that we properly associate with fascist countries, not democratic countries. And it's not just a, you can imagine a kind of benign loyalty oath that's made some kind of generic claims about freedom and nice principles, but the Pledge of Allegiance makes some pretty specific claims that most educated adults don't even have competent beliefs about, like, whether or not the United States is founded on Judeo-Christian values and whether or not the Union is properly considered as divisible or indivisible. These are things that obviously children have no rational conception of, much <laughs> less any kind of ability to argue against if they're being re- reciting this every day. Right. Absolutely. And how, could, and how could something like that be called anything but indoctrination if you're saying things like indivisible and, you know, claiming that there's liberty and justice for all and all those those things? And it's chanted over and over again over a period of years. I mean, you want to talk right. about indoctrination. And if you opt out, you are, you do, I opted out of saying the Pledge of Allegiance Ostracism. in public school. Absolutely. I would, that, my um, horror teacher. To feel uncomfortable. Oh, that, yeah, did not like it at all. Told my army colonel dad that his daughter wasn't saying the Pledge of Allegiance mm-hmm. and turned my home life into hell for six months. But then again, you know, I was more than happy to say to my dad, hey, you say that you fought to protect my rights is my right to conscience covered in the New Hampshire Constitution. Yes, it is. It's my right to free speech. Religion, I, I don't believe this country is under God. You know what, uh, Chris, you're spot on when you pointed out that it's fascist. The writer of the Pledge of Allegiance was a man named Francis Bellamy. Christian socialist. Uh, a Nazi, excuse me, Nazi, uh, etc. Et Christian socialist, also known as National Socialist. He would have called himself probably a Christian socialist, but he wasn't that far off from a National Socialist, which would have made him a Nazi, which would have made him pretty friendly towards the ideas of uh, fascism, I would think. And it's straight up an indoctrination uh, pledge. That's what it's always been. In fact, it used to have the Bellamy salute. If you Google Bellamy salute, you will find what the old version of the pledge used to look like with children standing by a flag with their arm raised in front of them, sticking straight out, just like you would see after Hitler and his men would have done their little Nazi salute thing. It was essentially the exact same salute. In fact, Hitler borrowed it from what I understand. It's not surprising at all. Hey, do you know if um was Bellamy the man who wrote the original uh, oath, or was he the one? Because somebody years later had added the under God part. Yeah, that was added during the Red Scare. The and, of it. Under Cong- under God was at, added by Congress in 1954 during the Red Scare, as Ian said. Okay. Um, Bellamy did um, pen the Pledge of Allegiance as part of a ploy to sell magazines 
Um, he was also a flag salesman. And, and yeah. at, which was an addendum to <laughs> flag sales. So, yeah. So, and he, he was part of the um, National Socialist Party, which is, of course, the, um, the same party that Hitler belonged to over in Europe. And so, you know, yeah, fascism has its the, – the pledge absolutely has its roots in fascism. It was a very popular political philosophy at the turn of the century, 19th to the 20th century. Oh, yeah. I seem to recall Benjamin Tucker saying some none too flattering things about Mr. Bellamy in uh, State Socialism and Anarchism, or maybe it's a different Bellamy I'm thinking of. I can't but imagine Chris Benjamin Tucker had anything nice himself. to say about the pledge. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, for your call tonight. <laughs> Appreciate hearing from you. 855 450 free. Uh, so we could go on about that, but Mark, you did have the Bradley Manning story, which yep. was a list of things that Wikipedia, excuse me, not Wikipedia, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks leaked out. From the information that Bradley Manning gave to them. Right. And I think that this is important to point out because from a practical side, when somebody leaks documents um, and, uh, you know, as a soldier leaks documents, we need to know that those documents were important that they leaked. Otherwise, you know, I may very well agree that he broke his oath. I think, however, if he leaked important things that American people should know about in order to be able to make decisions about their government, that in fact he didn't break his oath because his oath is to uphold the Constitution. And by, you know, by that you would assume the people uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that 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 Constitution protects. So here is a list of things that uh, Bradley, that PFC at the time, Manning, is accused of having made public. That there was an official policy to ignore torture in Iraq. And, uh, you know, this goes along with the whole um, the Iraq war logs published by WikiLeaks revealed thousands of reports of prisoner abuse and torture that had been filed against the Iraqi security forces. And um, it goes on to detail that U.S. officials going on the second one. U.S. officials were told to cover up evidence of child abuse by contractors in Afghanistan. U.S. contractors working for the U.S. military were buying, and, and, and I believe still are, buying and selling little boys for parties for their um, Afghan for these Afghan people. This is a way of pedophilia is a way of life over there to, for some, and the, the U.S. contractors were participating in it. U.S. officials were covering it up. This one thing an, alone, any one of these alone, is plenty mm-hmm. to exonerate. Bradley Manning, in my opinion. But those people out there that think that, that little American kids shouldn't be buggered, but somehow or another, it's okay to put Bradley Manning in prison because he broke his oath for protecting little kids from being buggered. Guantanamo prison has held mostly innocent people and low-level operatives. It, left, it let this information out, and many of these people were freed as a result. Mm. That there's an official tally of civilian deaths in Af- Iraq and Afghanistan. The United really? States State Department lied, bald-faced lied, and said they did not keep this information. Wow. GD them to hell because they lied to the American people who are supposed to be electing. How can I make a decision to elect or to reelect or to not reelect George W. Bush <laughs> and his cronies <laughs> if I don't have the information? How can I do that? U.S. military officials... Don't with, worry, it didn't matter w- how you voted about that. <laughs> right. U.S. military officials withheld information about the indiscriminate killing of Reuters journalists and innocent Iraqi civilians. This is the collateral murder video. This is the biggest piece of the puzzle that um, was revealed. But people will still say, well, I didn't know what, what did Bradley Manning do anyway. Huge stuff. Mm-hmm. Like the State Department backed corporate opposition to Haitian minimum wage law. Now, I don't care... For minimum wage laws, but I don't think that the United States government should be getting involved in Haitian laws, especially especially when this government does back minimum wage laws. The U.S. government had had long been faking its public support for Tunisian uh, President Ben Ali, so its involvement there. Uh, Known Egyptian torturers received training from the FBI Mm. in Quantico, Virginia. Wow. Flew them in, huh? The State Department authorized the theft of U.N. Secretary General's DNA. That's a little spyish, isn't it? Mm. We ought to know that. The Japanese and U.S. governments had been warned about the seismic threat of Fukushima. How could they not? Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, they just don't tell us these things. Everything's secrets these days. The Obama administration allowed Yemen's president to cover up a secret U.S. drone camp bombing campaign. From his own people. So, you know, it 
the what Bradley Manning revealed was a huge treasure trove of information yeah. that the active voter can use. And none of that put any soldier in jeopardy. Right. No. Oh, they can't point to one single soldier yeah. that had so much as a hangnail yeah. because of Bradley Manning. We are out of time for tonight. Thanks, guys. Hey, thank you. And you should also think further about, you know, what can you do to change how you behave towards this government knowing all of this stuff? We'll see you tomorrow. FreeTalkLive.com.